Hi, I'm David Dickman, Director of Product Management here at Cloudera. And today we'll be talking to you about data management with the Cloudera data platform. When we talk about data management, we're fundamentally talking about getting business value from all of our data. And one of the key themes I've been picking up here at the Gartner Data and Analytics Summit this week has been the theme of ecosystem. Having a single cohesive ecosystem across all of our data with all of our tools available to that data is how we're gonna get that best value from all of our data. And that means building data products everywhere, which is why we need hybrid cloud. We're gonna be building a lot of open data lakehouse architectures that help us do a lot of different things with our data. But we're gonna be building these out in Amazon and Azure and Google Clouds. As we do so, we'll also be still investing in data that's in our on-premises environments or in private cloud data services. In order to bring all this together, we need a global enterprise data fabric, which is what the Cloudera data platform brings. Our hybrid cloud with our unique shared data experience give us a single place for metadata and data cataloging, a single pane of glass for security and governance, a single source of observability across all of our environments, and replication to ensure the right data is delivered to the right place at the right time. Now, while we're building this global enterprise data fabric, we're also doing this with tools that complete the entire data lifecycle. Whether we're bringing in fast moving data with data flow and streaming, or doing business applications with an operational database, preparing that data with data engineering for use in our data warehouses, or doing advanced analytics with machine learning. We're ultimately looking to get to move us from a cost center to a value center. We want to lead with the hybrid cloud, giving transformative business value from all of our data, efficient and fast application development, so we spend less time dealing with our data and more time using it for business value. So let's see how we do this in the Cloudera data platform. Today, we're talking about flood data, and we're building an early warning system for flooding based on current weather. To figure out what we've got, Let's take a look at our entire environment. So here's the Cloudera data platforms management console showing all the environments under management, some on-premises, some Azure, some Amazon, and some Google. And here we see the single pane of glass for our security and governments across all of those clouds and on-premises. We can also take a look at our data that we've started to curate for this project. So here we see in the data catalog, all of the data lakes that are available to us and all of the assets on all of those data lakes. By the way, we're not just constrained to looking at tables and columns. We can look at all kinds of assets. We can look at files. We can look at directories. We can look at NiFi flows and more. And this is just a snippet of all the things that we can land in the data lake and manage using the Cloudera data platform. Now, today we're talking about flood data. So here are some of the data samples that Gartner has given to us to perform this exercise. Let's go ahead and take a look at some of these data assets. So here we have the Gartner Coast Flood Table. We brought this data in already. We've already run the profilers, which allow us to automatically classify and tag our data. We can also manually add additional classifications and tags if we wish. This allows us to be able to do additional things to this data automatically. In this case, by marking the data as sensitive, we're going to be able to automatically redact certain data portions, or we'll be able to hide the data completely from those who shouldn't be able to see it. We can do this at the asset level or at the attribute level. Here you see we're adding additional tags at the attribute level, which will do automatic redaction to those who shouldn't see that data, but can still see the whole table. We can take a look at the policies that are driving what goes on in these profilers. We have a number of policies that come out of the box that you can enable or disable as you choose, and you can create your own tag-based user uh, um, profiles that will be also able to be enabled or disabled as you need. Now, while we've been doing this work, somebody has gone and made an aggregate of this table. When we go and look at the aggregate itself, we see any classifications, any tagging has automatically been inherited. And we can also go to the asset log and see who else is using this data and where it's being used. Now, there's another way to look at our data. We said we're treating data as a product. So here we see the data sets. Data sets are a way of grouping a number of data assets together to be able to like them, have collaborative dialogue around them, even give these star ratings. Let's go ahead and create a new one for our Gartner data. 
They'll give it a meaningful name and a description. And this allows folks to be able to find this data if they want to be able to reuse it in other business contexts. We're going to go ahead and add a number of data assets. While we're adding these data assets, we can add tables, we can add reports, we can add APIs, we can add anything that is related to sharing this data out as a data product, which means we have the ability to socially describe reports, socially describe data, how useful is it, what level of curation is it, how popular is it, and that way we can, when we share this data, understand if this is going to be useful for our business context, and if we're not sure, we'll know who to reach out to and have that dialogue with to ensure we have the best use of all of the data available. So here's the flooding data that we've just created. But we also need to take a look at data from a different perspective. Let's change our hat to a business intelligence uh, hat. We're going to go into the Cloudera data visualization through the data warehouse user experience. So here we see the same data assets. Let's go ahead and look at that flood data again. And here we can see the table statistics, column statistics, and everything else that tells us what quality of this data is and if this data is complete enough for our use. And we can go ahead and create a data set right here. Again, we're collaborating around the same data assets, but we're doing so from our own user context. So here I'm a BI analyst looking at the data. Now we pick this up as a single table, but CDP also recognizes a join between additional tables while we're defining this data set and gives us a nice visual model. So we can understand first that it's more than one asset and that they're working together to provide the visualization we're looking for. We're also going to bring in some weather streams. We're going to bring in the current weather forecast so that we can use that as part of our prediction for flooding potential. We're going to use the ReadyFlow gallery, which gives us a no-code way. We just defined the endpoints of bringing data in. We have the weather data exposed to us as a Kafka topic. We're going to flow that right into the data lake tables. Now, that's a no-code way, but if we want, we can also use the flow designer to build even more sophisticated and complex data flows. In this particular example, we're going to be bringing in traffic camera data so we can compare the weather forecast with what we actually see at street level to get a little more accuracy out of our weather predictions. And that actually is going to help us in our AI and ML portion. So here we're going to go ahead into the Cloudera machine learning experience and we're going to take a look at something called the Applied Machine Learning Prototypes or AMPs. These are pre-built ML projects that we can use. These are all open source, free to use. There's no licensing, no entitlement. You may use these as, as often as you want, completely free of charge. We'll go ahead and select one of these AMPs to build out our weather flood prediction model. We're going to train it on on-premises GPUs because we made a significant investment in on-premises environment. But if we didn't have those GPUs, we could have gone ahead and used the cloud to help us do this. Here you see some of the code that was copied over and all of the other assets that allow us to build this out as that final model. But I also want to show that here, while we're doing our machine learning, while we're talking about data management, I also want to show some of the secondary preparations we can do to right fit this data for its specific use case. So here, as the machine learning professional, I'm going to do additional cleansing and additional data preparation to make this best fit for use in my model that I'm training for the prediction of flood potential and flood risk. The result of this is our early warning dashboard. So here we see a real-time weather station data streaming in showing us the level of precipitation during a recent storm. The other part of this is a flood risk heat map showing us which counties have high risks of flooding and low risks of flooding. One of the first things we notice, of course, is that the flood potential is not one-to-one -one matching the current precipitation levels. And that's because high rain in a high altitude area is probably less likely to flood than even a little bit of rain in a low altitude. Well, let's go ahead and zoom in on just the tip. We'll select a couple of counties here to zoom in on just the tip of Florida where we can really see this in action. So here we see the two different heat maps, one showing current precipitation levels and the other showing where we're getting that high risk of flood. So what we saw with the Cloudera data platform managing all of our data is being able to use that data on premises or in the cloud wherever it may be with a hybrid and multi-cloud solution. We also saw a lot of different experiences working on the same data at the same time, from data warehousing to operational database to machine learning and data flow. Same skills, same experiences wherever they need to be deployed. And we saw a single pane of glass with our shared data experience, providing a single center for security and governance, metadata management, and much, much more.
So this is Cloudera Data Platform for data management here at the Gartner Data and Analytics Summit.